My name is Roald Sergeyev. I am professor of physics at the University of Maryland in this country. Uh, but before I came here 23 years ago, for the most of my life, uh, I was in the Soviet Union. I was a Soviet scientist. At uh, late, during Gorbachev time, became even involved in politics. I was a member of the uh, Soviet parliament and uh, advisor to Gorbachev on Star Wars and science. Uh, ABM Treaty, which was um, uh, first suggested uh, by administration of President Nixon, and then finally was adopted uh, as a joint international treaty signed uh, by Nixon and Brezhnev, uh, assumed that countries uh, should limit themselves in the activity re related to missile defense. Uh, for example, uh, one of the major points was each country would have a right uh, to have only local, one site equipped with missile defense, no uh, nationwide uh, global uh, missile defense. Uh, second, uh, countries uh, uh, agreed to limit uh, their uh, uh, intervention into new technologies. Uh, laboratory level uh, would be allowed research and development, especially part of development in tests, uh, would be uh, strictly forbidden and controlled uh, if it would be related to completely new technologies. And uh, from the very beginning of uh, debate about Star Wars, uh, Gorbachev and uh, Soviet team were using this letter of ABM Treaty to protest about American uh, wide-range plans uh, to implement Star Wars technologies. We knew that uh, it would be very difficult uh, to um, uh, persuade Americans to drop the idea of Star Wars. However, uh, we expected some kind of uh, trade-offs, and major trade-offs we were expecting was whether Americans would try to uh, suggest the idea slowly getting uh, away of uh, ABM treaty. And uh, most of our preparations were how we should uh, argument, how we should uh, argue in favor of keeping and strengthening ABM treaty. One option was, for example, to suggest uh, 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 so-called grace period, if either of sides would decide eventually to abandon ABM tre uh, treaty, to walk uh, out, so there should be introduced uh, something like grace period, how long? Five years, 10 years, maybe better, 15 years. Period within which they would be unable to abrogate the, uh, uh, the letter of the treaty. Uh, another option was to see uh, what kind of activity uh, in uh, technology of missile defense should be permissible within uh, existing uh, ABM treaty. The one particular urgent issue uh, for the uh, first part of the uh, decade in the 80s, it was a major problem, was what to deal with uh, what we called then Euro missiles. Uh, these were missiles, uh, medium range, which could deliver uh, nuclear warheads from uh, European uh, battleground to uh, against Soviet targets and vice versa. Soviet uh, Euro missiles like uh, SS 20s, who were uh, built in order uh, to um, create uh, juxtaposition to uh, uh, pe American Pershings. So it was very clear that it was a completely new uh, game in, in uh, Cold War because intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, would require 40 minutes or more to reach uh, uh, the ta their targets. Still, 
uh, nominally sufficient time for politicians to cool their minds and to find uh, solution in extreme case. For Euro missiles with nuclear warheads, it would take even less than five minutes to reach the target. And uh, most politicians on both sides of the ocean understood it. And uh, at this moment, the European uh, political elite played a very important role. They understood they, they are becoming uh, uh, playing role of pawns in this uh, uh, Cold War game. So uh, uh, elimination of uh, medium range missile was emerging as a major talk during uh, summits uh, in Reykjavik and following summits in 1987 in Washington. My very first uh, sensation after following uh, his uh, uh, speech immediately after uh, saying bye to Reagan he uh, gathered a, a big press conference in Reykjavik, uh, was that he was very disappointed. And uh, it was uh, uh, such a, a dramatic uh, moment of two days of ups and downs till the, till the very end of meeting with Reagan. He obviously ho was hopeful that Reagan eventually would say, OK, let's uh, get rid of Star Wars especially since idea of eliminating uh, all strategic nuclear arms came from Reagan. It was already a huge, unbelievable surprise for all of us. Of course, uh, some of my colleagues on Soviet side thought probably it was a trick, it, probably it was a cheating uh, uh, by American team. But uh, uh, I think Gorbachev emotionally was very much involved with this idea, and it was a very big uh, disappointment for him that finally he couldn't reach agreement with Reagan. I, I can imagine what was happening with Gorbachev, because I was uh, pre representing uh, part of uh, uh, experts, especially on science side, who tried to persuade him that there is no direct immediate danger from the Star Wars idea. Technology is not ready. It is uh, like science fiction. And uh, we tried to persuade him that he should ignore most of the threats. And this is why I felt absolutely disappointed uh, when uh, uh, talks in Reykjavik uh, ended uh, with a zero result. I was disappointed with the final Gorbachev's uh, insistence uh, on elimination of the Star Wars uh, idea from American Arsenal. He was trying to say to Reagan, keep it only on laboratory level. Uh, don't go to development, to tests. And uh, not only me, many other uh, Soviet uh, experts saw that uh, probably it was too much of Gorbachev to ask for Reagan. I think the main legacy of Re Reykjavik is uh, that uh, leaders of two great uh, uh, superpowers were able to speak about uh, the elimination of at least strategic nu nuclear arsenals. It was unthinkable before. Before there's only been counting all the meetings, Nixon, Brezhnev, uh, whatever, Khrushchev, uh, Kennedy, Khrushchev, Eisenhower, they were talking about modest redu reductions, uh, modest limits. For the first time in Reykjavik, we were talking about elimination of the major source of nuclear weapons. Uh, we, we may say in, in nuclear uh, terms, yes, it was the beginning of the end of Cold War. And uh, in political, in moral terms, dismantlement uh, of a Berlin Wall, of course, was the end of Cold War. I think it played a tremendous role. Uh, at the beginning, uh, before I joined the uh, official uh, Gorbachev team, uh, uh, it was a, a second uh, uh, track uh, contact uh, between 
mostly bet between scientists. We had a joint uh, um, working group between the National Academy of Sciences of the United States and the Soviet Academy of Science. Uh, I, for uh, several years, I was the head of the Soviet side of this uh, second track negotiations. And uh, we saw that mutual understanding and trust very important. And many technical scenarios we discussed. It was very useful for us to understand that realistic uh, majority of American scientific community also didn't like the idea of Star Wars. They didn't think it is workable. And uh, such great uh, uh, scientists of that period, most active in this field, like uh, Carl Sagan, for example. So they played a very important role uh, uh, in understanding uh, what is real, what is unreal. And of course, uh, whatever we were learning from these contacts with Americans, we uh, tried to instill in uh, Gorbachev when he be, uh, came uh, to um, become general secretary of Communist Party. And he was a very good uh, interlocutor in that respect. Nominally, there is a still continuation of the same old formats. There is a Pagwash movement, international Pagwash conferences uh, almost every year, uh, which bring uh, scientists, uh, other you know, humanitarians from the rest of the world, not only from the United States and uh, Russia. Uh, there is a growing involvement uh, of uh, uh, Chinese scientists, Indian scientists in this type of contacts. Uh, however, there is much less linkage between these particular contacts and uh, formal official governments, not like in the past. I think the first uh, linkage, which was initiated by President Eisenhower, who established uh, a special uh, a group of scientists at the, his scientific uh, advisors, Presidential uh, Science uh, Council. Similar thing happened to Ra in Russia with Gorbachev, appointing a few Russian scientists to similar position. Uh, I think right now this particular contact uh, is at least diminished, so we have to reinvigorate. I think uh, such uh, organizations like uh, International Atomic Energy Agency or like uh, your uh, uh, CTBTO, they could play a very important role in uh, interacting with the scientific community uh, wider, not only in, the, in two former superpowers. Absolutely. It was very clear since the uh, 70s that is verifiable. And uh, since that time, uh, uh, seismologists, scientists who are tracking the seismic waves caused by uh, explosions uh, or earthquakes, they learn so much more. And then uh, uh, CTBTO has a, such an extensive network of the stations Absolutely, we can track even smallest attempt, you know, starting with uh, only tens of tons. It's even the large uh, non-nuclear chemical explosions could not be uh, uh, secretly carried without knowledge.